This is taking place at a slower rate than we Miami Dolphins fans would all like, but there are signs of every game that the defense is getting better. Going back to the last game Tua Tungavailoa played in prior to Thursday night, he left the game with a lead, and it was up to the defense to lock things down. Well the defense didn't hold down the fort unfortunately, but did show some small signs during that game we haven't seen up to that point in the season. The way the offense has played lately, last year's defensive type of play can't get here soon enough. Because this year's offense, especially without Tua can use all the help it can get. In fact, it probably needs to be carried to the finish line. There were games last season when the defense played so well, they took over some games. Even though coach Brian Flores had stated that his offense never plays down, they did ride the defense to some wins. I wanted to talk about it right after that last game Tua played, to share this discovery, like it was spotting landfall, after being stranded at sea for so long. It's just too bad that it couldn't all come back at once, like turning on a light switch. If ever there was a good time for it to come back in that fashion, it would be right before playing a good team that has been a thorn in its side like the Baltimore Ravens. Getting back to the Miami Dolphins defense, there is this pesky caveat, when it comes time to evaluate them. Here comes that moral victory stuff, after holding it close this game before last playing the Buffalo Bills. The Bills then turned around the very next game and lost a low-scoring game to the Jacksonville Jaguars. During the last game, a win over the Houston Texans, Jerome Baker started to play out of his mind, even Justin Coleman got his first interception. It just shows when the whole unit plays well good things can happen, and almost any player can come up with the big play, when enough pressure is placed on the quarterback. The turnovers came in bunches this game, and yes it was to a lowly team, but this league can be fickle like that. Teams play up or down to their opponents at times along with some parity. Just look what happened to the Bills. With the Miami Dolphins getting this win on Thursday, it could be the showcase win of the season, given these two teams past records playing each other. It could be a springboard win, and the start of many more to come. If the defense played very good against the Texans, it was insanely good against the Ravens. Last year's defense might be showing up soon, and it did on Thursday, but it needs to be as whole to the original as possible if there are any good chances to beat the better teams that are sprinkled into the rest of the games left to play on the season. Miami proved they can play at that level against the Ravens but now they have to maintain it. I'm not saying it will happen, but it could happen. Tua Tungavailoa may need more time but he has to stay healthy. The Miami Dolphins may not have Tua Tungavailoa on the field Thursday night as the starter and while many fans want to defend him, injuries are a problem. Tungavailoa spends quite a bit of time banged up and while we can say some of it is freak accidents or unavoidable, the reality is that no matter the reason, he isn't on the field. The injury he sustained at Alabama wasn't his first big injury, it was only the most significant. Fast forward to today and we have to wonder if he is brittle or simply has a cloud over him. Looking back over his college career, Tungavailoa suffered a left ankle injury in 2018 and had surgery. In November of 2018 he had a quad injury and in October of 2018 he suffered a patellar strain that caused him to miss a week. Then in March, he fractured his finger and had surgery. On the NFL level it hasn't been great for him either. He suffered through early growing pains and uncertainty coming off the hip injury. In his rookie year he missed time due to a thumb injury and this year has missed time due to broken ribs. Now, with one game already missed due to another broken finger, Tungavailoa looks like he may miss a second game. Fans like to compare him statistically to other quarterback across the same body of work and starts in their early careers but Tungavailoa has missed significant time as well and that is a problem too. It is part of the evaluation process. Is he too fragile? Is he too prone to injury? Is it just bad luck thanks to a very bad offensive line? All of it is relevant if we are being honest. The Dolphins need to evaluate him and after the Deshaun Watson fiasco, Tua needs to be on the field proving to them or another team that he can be a top quarterback in the NFL. He can't do that on the sideline. Hopefully, Tua will return sooner rather than later but every game missed as one less game he will gain experience and trust to run the team. You can't grow if you don't play. No matter the reason. Could the Dolphins make a playoff push? The Thursday night game against the Baltimore Ravens looked an awful lot like what we saw so often from the 2020 Miami Dolphins, and it begs the question of whether we're going to see 2020 all over again down the stretch. And, yes, that means a playoff push. 
the dolphins obviously have a long road ahead before they even start thinking about snatching a postseason berth and they have made things incredibly difficult on themselves with their frustrating 1-7 start. But the dolphins are now on a two-game winning streak at a point in their schedule where they can make a run, and obviously need to make a run. The next four games for Miami are at the Jets, November 21st, followed by home games against Carolina, November 28th, the Giants, December 5th, and the Jets, December 18-19, with the bye coming between those last two games. Win all four games and the Dolphins suddenly find themselves at 7-7. Look at the current AFC standings, and you'll see only one team, Tennessee, with fewer than three losses. Is it really that crazy to think that a 9-8 team could snag one of the seven playoff spots in the conference? For that to happen and for Miami to be that team, the Dolphins would have to go 6-1 in their final seven games, which obviously is a tall order with the final three games at New Orleans, at Tennessee and at home against the New England Patriots. But that's the price for the early struggles. The Dolphins have left themselves with practically no margin for error, something Brian Flores brings up often when he talks about winning and losing in the NFL. With their current 3-7 record, the Dolphins have a 4% chance of making the playoffs. That percentage goes up to 16%, 1 in 6, if the Dolphins sweep their next four games, and it reaches 33% if they can finish 9-8 provided the loss is against New Orleans in Week 16. If the Dolphins somehow were able to run the table to finish 10-7, their chances would be at 89%. The bottom line, however you look at it, is it's obviously a long shot for the Dolphins to make the playoffs, but the final month of the season could get interesting if they can duplicate their Thursday night performance against Baltimore over the next month. And if we're being prisoners of the moment, forgive us but it's still a lot more fun than continuing to dissect what's gone wrong in this 2021 season.